Okay, so in this video we are going to continue on with our series on doubly linked lists and we're going to focus on how we can take a doubly linked list and reverse its orientation. So if we're given the following doubly linked list that looks something like this, where it starts off at the head node here with A, B, C, and D, and then null, what we want to do if we get a list like this and then plug it into the reverse function, we want to end up with a list that looks like this, where the orientation now starts at the head node here at D, which was previously the last node, and then starts from here, D, C, B, A, and then null. So it's just very intuitively reversed the orientation of the list um, as you would expect. So going back to this initial list here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over roughly how to accomplish this reversal. And then we're going to go through an implementation in Python and code up the logic behind this reversal strategy. So the first thing that we really want to focus on doing is reorienting these arrows. So right now, these next pointers point to the next one in the list, but we want to more or less flip those arrows around and then keep track of that and progress through the list until all of the arrows have been appropriately flipped to cause a reversal. So for instance, if we start off here, we'll, we'll have two pointers really. One pointer will point to the head initially of the list, and that pointer will eventually move throughout the list until it hits the end of it. And then we'll have a temporary pointer that's responsible for keeping track of kind of orienting these arrows in the proper fashion. So starting off here as, uh, let's just say that we have a current pointer that starts off at the head node. And one of the things that we'll want to do is we'll want to reorient this previous pointer. So a previous pointer is currently pointing to, to this one from B, but we really want this arrow to flip back around because again, we're reversing the list. So we want something that kind of looks like this where we've updated the status of the previous pointer to point to the next node in the list. Likewise, we're going to want to update the next pointer of this current node that we happen to be on to point in the opposite direction. So we'll say current.next is equal to the uh, we'll, we'll essentially flip this arrow back in around on itself. So we want the we want this arrow pointing in this direction towards the next. We want it to actually point to itself. So like that. So what we'll do after we do that is we'll follow this previous node or previous pointer to this node over here, and then we'll continue that strategy throughout the rest of the nodes. So as we go on until we hit null, the arrows will all be updated to reflect kind of the initial strategy here. And then the last thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to make sure that we update the head pointer, which initially pointed to the head of the list. We'll need to update that because now this node, the last node from the previous orientation is the head of the list. So we need to make sure that we update that in this new orientation. That's the general strategy. We'll step through Python code that does this, and then we'll go back to the slides periodically to uh, kind of hammer home certain points. So I've coded up a prototype reverse function here, and this is just taking self since it's part of the doubly linked list class. I've also created a doubly linked list object here and appended test elements one, two, three, four. So I've also called the reverse function, which currently does nothing, but hopefully it will reverse the elements. So whereas the list was one, two, three, four, calling that should reorient it to four, three, two, one, and we should see that result by printing the list out to the screen. So let's go ahead and code up the reverse function. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create our two pointers. So let's create a temporary pointer, which we'll initially set to none, and then we'll set a pointer, which we'll call current, and that will initially be set to the head of the list. We'll progressively be moving that down until we hit the null node in the list. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while current, so while it's not null, we're going to set our temporary pointer equal to current.previous. And then we're going to update current.previous is equal to current.next. So what do we do here? Let's go back to the slides. So what we did was we started, let's say here on this node, and then we stored the previous node in a temporary pointer. So a temporary pointer stores, at least at first, stores this node over here consisting of B. And so then what we what we do, now that we've had a, we have a temporary variable storing that, we can update the arrow, so that way we won't mess anything up. So what we do then is we say, current.previous is equal to current.next. So basically what that does, current.previous is equal to current.next flips the arrow around in on itself. So that's what that does. And now we want to do the same thing for the dot .next of the current node that we happen to be on as well. So we'll do a similar thing where we'll say current.next is now equal to temp. 
So again, that's why we stored that in this temporary variable, because if we said current.next is equal to current.previous, we've gone ahead and already changed that value of current.previous, and that would not give us the correct answer. So that's one of the reasons why we have a second pointer here to store the value of current.previous. So we've got current.previous updated, we've got current.next updated, and if you look at the visual representation of that and just focus on the first node, we should have something that looks like this. So the next thing we want to do is we want to say current is equal to current.previous. And when I said something like this, I mean something like this, where we've gone ahead and flipped next back in on the head. So we actually have something like this. And the last line that we just wrote, current is equal to current.previous, what that's going to do is that now that we've updated this previous to point over here, it's going to follow this guy down. It's going to start on this node, and it's going to follow the same procedure. So flip this arrow, flip this arrow, and then follow previous, which will be pointing towards C. So it'll keep doing that until we hit to the end of the list. So what we do now is we'll be at the end of the list after this loop is terminated, and we'll check if temp is not none. If temp's not none, then that corresponds to the last node in the list. So in this, in the example in the slides, if it wasn't none, that would correspond in this case to this node consisting of D. So if temp is actually a thing, if it's not none, what we're going to do is we're going to update the head. Because remember, we need to update the head from the initial node as it started to now the last node, which is now the first since we're updating the head of the list. So we say self.head is equal to temp.prev. And that should do it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to verify that this reverse function works as expected. So again, we should see 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, if we print out the list before. Let's go ahead and do that. So dlist.printlist. So we'll make a call to that. We'll print out a new line to make sure that we don't confuse the reversal and the initial list. So we should see the initial list, 1, 2, 3, 4. Print the reversal. We should see 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's go ahead and write that and give it a run. I'm going to clear the screen first, actually. So we see the initial list, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we see the reversal, which is 4, 3, 2, 1. So that seems to have worked. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As always, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.